The Genesis 6 narrative states that the Nephilim are on the earth in those days and also afterwards. If that's true, can we find evidence that corroborates this? I'm L.A. Marzulli. Join me as we go on the trail of a Nephilim. Coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere deep in the heart of the Santa Monica Mountains, I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. Special presentation here. Um, I hope this whets your appetite for live streaming at the Prophecy Watchers Conference because I'm going to show you a very intimate um, interview I did with Mondo Gonzalez. He interviewed me in 2020 at the Prophecy Watchers Conference in Colorado. And I'll show you part one, and then tomorrow we'll do part two. But first, a word from our trusted sponsor. Heart disease, blood clots, strokes, and kidney failure. This all can be found on the back of a ibuprofen bottle. And to top it all off, ibuprofen doesn't even get to the main cause of your pain and swelling problems. It's only temporary pain relief. And it's only masking the true problem, which is inflammation. This isn't a solution to your pain. Right now, you can go to getnativepath.com forward slash LA. I'll say that again, and it's right in the screen below. GetNativePath.com forward slash LA to learn more and see your special offer for being a Mark Z listener. Folks, it's not only ineffective, it's expensive and downright dangerous, especially for seniors. That's why researchers are saying to add this Antarctic super nutrient to your diet. I'm talking about omega-3 fatty acids, but not just any form of omegas. These are omega-3 fatty acids sourced from wild-caught krill. The omega-3 content from krill oil has been shown to support healthy blood pressure, circulation, brain health, as well as reduce inflammation, swelling, and joint pain. In fact, it can outperform ibuprofen, Advil, and Tylenol, and it doesn't have the dangerous side effects mentioned above either. Better yet, for a limited time, you can grab Native Path Antarctic krill oil for as low as 23 bucks a bottle. Just go to getnativepath.com forward slash LA. Once again, getnativepath.com forward slash LA right now to get your special offer for being a part of Mark's audience or click on the link below this video. So here's part one of the sit down interview I did with Mondo Gonzalez. So appreciate you guys coming to this last session, at least for us. And uh, we do have some questions that have come in, and if I run out, I'll uh, open it up to the crowd. Oh, lucky me. Yeah, lucky you. So, um, you know, honestly, the, one of the first questions I would like to ask L.A. is, um, mm. there we go. you know, when we think about some of the, what, what I would say like two years ago, a lot of these topics are very taboo. Uh, in the last couple of years, that has changed a lot because a lot of the facts have come out and the government's come out and admitted a lot of things. But... Um, when we think about the importance of the gospel of Jesus Christ, um, that's, of course, so important. Why spend any time at all being on the trail with the Nephilim, um, aliens, transhumanism, UFOs? Why in the world should any Christian spend their time on those kind of fringe topics? Well, there's they certainly a big echo here. Thanks yeah. for coming, guys. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yep. They... Um, you know, salvation is, is the shallow end of the pool. What I mean by that is, you know, salvation is, is so important. The easy stuff. The, very, that's, yeah. And that's when Paul tells us, you know, we've already, we've already talked about salvation. We've already done that. Now we're going to move to the deeper thing of the spirit. So, again, our mission statement is to expose the deception of the prince of the power of the air and to herald the return of the King Jesus. So we do both. We expose but we're always pointing to that, you know, we're going to go up at some point. And not only that, he's coming back on the white horse. I was there when I first became a Christian. I've told this story before, but I'll say it again real quickly. And, and Father, I pray that I would not 
not get emotional when I tell it. That's because we'll, we'll never get out of here. I was there for three seconds when I was 40, 42 years ago, I became a born again Christian. I was dragged out of the occult, dragged out of a new age. I had spirit guides, Carlos Castaneda type experiences. I mean, I was immersed in it, immersed. I lived it with the guru, three years, third eye open. I mean, the whole, everything, as far as you could go, pretty much, you know, except traveling to India and staying there. I went, I went deep. And then at, at, when I was 24, I left it all. I just went, this is all bogus. I'm the same schmuck I've always been. And when I was 30, I, I came of a Lord. It was exactly the opposite of what I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, some people go, oh, it was joy and peace. No, I was being dragged out of the kingdom of darkness. So I was in spiritual warfare and didn't know how to deal with it. But during that time, the Lord took me in the body or out of the body. Mm-hmm. I was out of the body. Um, it was not a vision. I was there. So I was there for three seconds. You <laughs> and... Yeah. I find myself on the back of a white horse. I never read the book of Revelation. I had no idea where I was or what was going on. I'm holding on to the horse's manes. Horse's mane. That second one. So I'm like this. Second one. Second two. That was interesting. Second two, the rider on the white horse is way over there. And the armies of heaven are not linear. They're stacked up like floors of a building. Floor one, floor two, floor five, floor eight. And it's in a horseshoe shape. Mike keeps going off, don't know what's going on. And it's in a horseshoe shape like this. So it's not linear. It's in a horseshoe shape. And the armies of heaven are stacked up. And I don't know how high they go. So second one, the main. Second two, there's the rider on the white horse. Second three, I, I realize I'm on the right flank up about eight rows back from the, from the front. And the guys in front are really big. And then I'm back. And I had no idea where I was, what I had just seen. And then my pastor goes, I tell him, like in counseling a couple of days later, I had this, you know, yeah, I'm not sure what happened. And he goes, he's looking at me like, have you ever read Revelation 19? So I believe that um, that, that that sort of set up what, what we do. Because what we, what we talk about is the Nephilim. We talk about the kingdom of darkness, but we expose the kingdom of darkness. And then we herald the return of the king. And having been there for three seconds, it's real. I mean, he is coming back on that white. I had a dream a couple of weeks ago. I'm too many rabbit trails. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just listening. I had a dream a couple of weeks ago that was, and I kept going, in the Lord, can we go back to that dream? You know, but I'm I'm on this beach. It's, I'm in the middle of nowhere, just this beautiful white sand beach. And the first thing I notice is Jesus is making a fire. He's like sitting in front of a fire, and he's kind of stoking it. There's no eye contact. He's like he's doing something. He's preparing a meal, something like that. And I look to my left, and there's the white horse, about 50, 50 yards away. No, and the horse I I was on, no no saddle, no bridle. People ask me, were there women there? I can't tell you that. Some of it, some of it is just blocked. You just, yeah. you, you know, you're there, and it's like not for here, but you're shown something, but you don't, you can't carry all of what you see back. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. So that's why we do yeah. it. And I, I, Ellen and I have talked a lot about, you know, we've done some programs that are going to be coming, you know, forthcoming, but just the, the nature of studying the supernatural, it's, it's interesting to me, you know, as a pastor, where many Brothers and sisters, you know, they believe in the resurrection. You know, they believe in angels, right? I mean, of course, it's in the Bible. I mean, for the most part, you have people that when you read about, uh, you know, Gabriel showing up to Mary, like, do you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. But then it's like the supernatural was for back then. Yeah, not now. Not now. And so many times when we come to address some of these issues, you know, our goal is to maintain that the supernatural has been there all along. And so we shouldn't, why would we expect, again, in America, we think about the sanitized version of, of the spiritual warfare, where if you go to some of these other countries, <laughs> these third world countries, yeah. they understand spiritual warfare, they understand demonic stuff, and, but uh, Satan has chosen for, for whatever reason, for the most part, to keep us blind to the other side. But when we approach scripture, 
we realize, yes, so we look at Scripture, you know, in the worldview, and we look out and we go, okay, well, what would we expect to see? And we, again, you see it as a missionary, but I think as well, let's go back, because why, why talk about these things? Um, I know for you and others, and maybe some of you, how many of you have come to know the Lord through some of these topics? Right. And God uses them, uh, they're, they're, and they're kind of fun, I mean, honestly. It's, <laughs> but we get introduced to some of these weird things, and then you come to know the gospel. And that's ultimately what the, the, the reason why is, because it's not just doing it for the sake of doing this, but it is to point back to the gospel. One, one more thing. I'm on coast to coast uh, two or three times a year. And it's, for those of you who don't know, it's a very secular show. Um, and George is sort of a chameleon. He's the host. He, whoever's on, that's what kind of paradigm he adapts, which is fantastic because it's a platform where there is no ridicule. Everybody gets their say. So it's, it's, and he allows me to talk about Jesus and the whole deal. So um, every time I'm on there, uh, sometimes, especially in the earlier days, I would refer to the Bible as the guidebook of a supernatural. Because that's what it is. Because I'm, I'm speaking to people that if I say Bible to, it's like, click, there's got to be another station, quick. But if I say guidebook of a supernatural, it's like all of a sudden their ears perk up. And sure enough, every time I say that, the next day we'll get a, a flurry of emails. Dear Lally, I went on Amazon. And I, and I tried to find Guidebook of a Supernatural, but it's not there. Where, where, do, where do I find it? And then I go, well, and, and it gives me an opening to witness to him. See, the, 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 the church, you know, we, we try to, we have to speak to people in a way that they can understand. So if we're speaking to a new age person, someone that's come out of that whole, oh, thank you. Yes, test, test one, test two. Old man river. <laughs> so if we, if we speak in a language that they can understand, if we, because the, the Bible is a guidebook of the supernatural. It teaches us how to, it teaches us about the heavenly, oh, thank you. Woo-hoo! Fresh. Yep. Sorry, we're going to get rid of this one. Thank you. Just so, yeah, it keeps coming. Yourself. So if we, if we speak in a language that they can understand, and we understand that the Bible, as a guidebook of the supernatural, teaches us what spiritual warfare is, teaches us, what the battle is, teaches us the heavenly, the protocols of this heavenly war, where it's going, the prophetic message, I mean, which is utterly supernatural. I mean, prophecy is completely supernatural. I remember sitting down with an atheist, he goes, well, just show me one thing that's supernatural about the Bible. <laughs> that kind of an attitude, I said, well, are you aware that Israel, the regathering of the nation of Israel has been prophesied for thousands of years, and it happened, and here we are? And I showed him the passage, and he just, he was dumb, he didn't know what to say. Well, maybe somebody invented that. Oh, yeah, so let me see. We have the Holocaust, and on the ashes of the Holocaust, we have, which was the birth pains of Israel. The Holocaust, I wrote about this in called the chess match. The Holocaust happens because Hitler's a type of an antichrist, in my opinion, and the dragon anoints him because he knows something's up. He knows that the latter rain's beginning to happen in Israel, which hadn't happened in almost 2,000 years. There's a trickle of Jews coming back. The whole Zionism thing is starting to happen. He raises up his Antichrist man, and his, his goal is to wipe out every Jew on the planet. Because if he can do that, Israel is not a nation. It will never happen. Mm-hmm. God's a liar. Follow me. I win. That's what's at stake. And I truly believe every single person who died in the Holocaust is, maybe they're the souls under, underneath the altar. I don't know. But I think they're with him. Yeah. I mean, when you look at, uh, it, it's interesting if you ask the question, um, what is required for, for Jesus to come back? And there's a, a very specific phrase in Matthew 23, 37 through 39, where Jesus, is, he's kind of his last comment to the leadership. And he says, you know, I've desired to gather you together as a chick. You know, Jesus' heart is for his, his brothers. But he says, you will not see me again until what? Until you say, blessed is you who comes in. And I love until words because I circle those. Those are great time factors. And so what I say is if we could just get Naftali Bennett to welcome Jesus back and invite him back, you know, today, <laughs> Jesus would come back. But the, the point of the tribulation, it's to grind Israel down. God's like, we're going to have a talk. You guys killed my son. And we're going to have a talk. And he's your savior. He's the savior of the world. And so the purpose of the tribulation, and you see what in Revelation 12 on, the second half where the Antichrist seeks to demolish the Jews, but God's going to protect them, and he's, they're going to come down, and we know that, again, two-thirds of the Jews are going to perish, Zechariah 13. You see, you have all these passages, but they're going to come to the point where they recognize 
and they're going to mourn, right? Zechariah 12, 10, the one whom they pierced, and they're going to go, yes, Jesus, come rescue us from this guy coming to, to genocide. So if, if Satan can get rid of every last Jew, then that passage can never happen. And so you see this theology behind it. So here's a, a great question. Is Mark Zuckerberg or Elon Musk a Nephilim? <laughs> On the record, L.A. Marzulli, what do you have to say? <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. So, so here's the deal. I had a call from an anonymous person. I can't go public with the story, but I could say this. That this isn't this, public here. This isn't yeah, public. This isn't public. Mm -hmm. That this individual had an encounter with a human being, and we've heard this before, and it shape shifted right in front of this person and became reptilian looking. Now, if, if I heard it once, that's one thing. But I've heard it over and over and over and over and over again. Dr. Jacob's book, They Are Walking Amongst Us, they are walking amongst us. Um, I've never encountered one. I have no desire to. People go, Ellie, do you want to go see one? No. Hold on a minute. we got, like, major technical difficulties here. What's happening now? The microphone? Your other mic's going out. Yeah, this is... My mic's yeah, fine. Yeah. We, we, we've experienced this before. <laughs> we know uh, what's going on. Shit. There we go. Dr. Jacobs, but that's a, man River. <laughs> again. Here we go. <laughs> Such a ham. Yeah, that's good. ridiculous. So, so you know, circling back to that, Gary Stearman's talked about that. Maybe they're the Ten Kings. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Maybe the idea of Zuckerberg and, and guys of his ilk. Um, He's financial Elon oligarchs. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this whole—they control so much. It's ridiculous. We've never seen that type of wealth and control in all of human history, and now it's here. They are walking amongst us, and this will sound funny. But it's true. Dr. David Jacobs, if you want to see something, go to Walmart at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I know it's funny, but what happens is the handlers, the handlers take the hybrids into Walmart and show them how to integrate. Show them how, what money is, lines are, pens, pencils, things to walk up and down the aisles. I had a woman that called me, was at Walmart. She's about five foot four. So what do you do with stories like this, right? And she's in Walmart, and this very tall, 12-foot woman walks down the aisle. 12-foot woman. Mm. And looking very feminine. Wasn't a guy on stilts and drag, okay? It was, it, was, it was definitely female all day long. Sort of attractive, but 12 feet tall. When she walked by, her head came up to the woman's waist. Now, what do you do with that? And I said, well, did other people see her? And she goes, yeah, we all just stood there. That's called UFO brain fog. When, you, when we're around something like that, like I talked about this this morning, when I went into that long barrow uh, in England, I, I, all of a sudden, I could feel it. And I just, I just went, I know what this is. I've had it before. I'm out of here. I stopped the interview. The cameraman wasn't getting anything. Hugh Newman wasn't getting anything, but I was getting it. And I just, I just, I got to get out of here. It took about, I don't know, five, five minutes, four or five minutes, whatever, for my head to clear. When we're around these kind of entities, it's like you don't think rationally. And so here are all these people watching a 12-foot woman, when was the last time you saw that, at Walmart, walk down the aisle, and no one does anything. No one says, excuse me. That's, that's UFO brain fun, are you? Talk about... Uh... Uh, Dr. Jacobs' book, as well as Matt, uh, John Mack, because okay. you, you have, I guess I'll rephrase it, is that we're coming into the age of, I mean, I'm a science guy. I, I like facts. I like evidence. I like peer-reviewed stuff. I mean, that's just the way. So, But what we're seeing is some of these secular uh, PhD scientists from Harvard and other places, that they're hearing these stories, and, and they're researchers. And so they, they have come to research this stuff, and they document it, and they put it out there, because the if we think about the alien abduction phenomenon, which... Again, we'll talk about that. Just recently, as you guys might have heard, in the FOIA request the Pentagon put out, um, just actually in March, uh, they put this request out, and, and uh, somebody had requested a magazine. It took five years. <laughs> it comes out. And right there, they're documenting, the FBI, uh, the, the Pentagon at least, they're documenting that, oh, well, here's some of the things you mentioned a little bit last night, but um, unaccounted for pregnancies, but then also uh, abductions, as well as a whole bunch of other things. So here we are. I'm thinking... Okay, this is the official Pentagon report of their, their document of this, and, and John Mack spent and others, but 
Jacobs wrote this book, and he, has, he, he coined a new phrase. These aren't Christians by any means. Let's, let's not, and they, they're very respected. But he, come up, he came up and he coined this word hubrid. Talk about that. He says that there are hubrids, human alien hybrids walking amongst us. That's the title of his book. Um, I've interviewed him several times, mm -hmm. um, and we had a, it's, it's in our Watchers series, if you're interested in that. Um, those one on one interviews with Jacobs, they're incredible. <coughs> But this hails back to the seed of the woman and the seed of the dragon. The seed of the dragon will be enmity with the seed of the woman. He, the one coming from the woman, the Messiah, will crush the dragon's head. That happened on Calvary. So we know that, that that's in the past. Then we get to Daniel, and I talked about this last night. Mm -hmm. Their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave to them, which is where we are now. So the dragon is constantly changing tactics, especially after Calvary. I mean, that was it. That was checkmate. It's over. But the protocols of the war... Um, apparently, still go on at, at, because he's not, he hasn't come back yet. So even though the kingdom is his and he's got the keys, he hasn't claimed it yet. I think it just went dead again. No, That's you're bizarre. Back. Yeah. Yeah. It's really getting weird, guys. <laughs> Third mic. So, um, yeah, so um, <laughs> this, hails, this hails back at Genesis 315 <laughs> in, in the book of Daniel. It's really strange. Father, in Jesus' name, we just come before you, <laughs> and we take authority over whatever is happening here, yeah. in Jesus' name, and we ask, Lord, that you would stop the interference. If it's technical, then we battery, whatever. But if it's something else, Lord, we pray that you would stop your power and do it soon, in Jesus' yeah. name. Amen. Amen. So, you know, Genesis 3.15 is... Uh, here comes well, we got another one over here. <laughs> And here's the baton handoff. Thank you. This is the fourth Checking mic. One, two, three. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Point. So where was I? Genesis 3, 15, the book of Daniel. So what we see is that he's created. I remember asking Chuck Missler this years ago. I said, Chuck, what do you think about the hybrid program? Without missing a beat, without you know even thinking about it, pondering about it, he goes, oh, Satan's out number two to one. He's building an army. Just like that. He just rolled it right out. Says out number two to one, he's building an army. It's like, whoa, Jack. So he believes in these hybrids. We have had in, in, in our free film on YouTube, mm -hmm. Al Matthews, who became the centerpiece of the film, okay? Al had this, this encounter with a, a hybrid, a hybrid, an entity, mm -hmm. part human. So he's riding up on the elevator with this woman, never met this woman before in his life. She leans over and, he, and she says, whispers in her ear, they're listening, Al. And Al's immediately creeped out because it's just the two of them in a freight elevator. And he goes, who's listening? And she goes, you know, the Grays. I know that you've been taken many times and we were supposed to meet on the ship. And he's like totally creeped out by this. She's wearing these dark glasses, almost like swimmer goggles, that conceal her eyes. So <laughs> in the film as I'm interviewing Al, uh, so I gave her my number, that's what Al says, and I go, mistake number one. <laughs> And she calls him up two weeks later, and he goes over to her place. She's having uh, a get-together with a girlfriend. They're drinking wine out of these huge goblets. They're out on a deck. It's a beautiful summer night. And he's sitting, like, across from her, and he goes, and he see, notices this deer fly, a huge fly, on the edge of her goblet. And he goes, let me get that for you. And she goes, no, I'll get it. And she reaches out with her hand like this. She doesn't grasp the fly. The fly sticks to her finger. And she brings it up like this and goes, <laughs> like that. She eats the fly. So now we're in high strangeness time, right? Mm -hmm. And then she takes off the glasses, and she goes over, and she sits on Al's lap. We're all adults here. She sits on Al's lap. And I, so I stop him right there. I stop the end and go, Al, Al, Al. You've got a girlfriend at the time. Is this normal behavior? No one's ever asked him that question before. And you see him, he goes, <laughs> he's like shocked because, you know, he realizes, wait a minute, why did I even allow this? And she lifts up his shirt and she starts rubbing his chest and going, my, you're well preserved. And she leans forward to kiss him and Al pushes her off. When he pushes her off, the eyes shape shift. The eyes shape shift. And she lets out the most evil laugh you've ever heard in your life. Al flees terrified from the scene. She was a hubrid. And he goes to Gordy Tong's house. They call me up on the phone. We pray with Al. We counsel him. We gave him resources. Two weeks later, he gives his life to the Lord. Amen. Wow. Thank you. 
So that's in some ways how it happens. That woman could pass. You wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. And we've heard, you know, they, they keep trickling and we keep stories like this. There is a breeding program. It is happening. And it's, these are soulless entities. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Um, here they are. You know, Roswell 1, Roswell 2, obviously uh, my, one of my favorites. What is the truth? Look, this thing's heating up. UFOs are real burgeoning and not going away. Do yourself a favor. Go to our streaming site, streaming.lamarzuli.net, streaming.lamarzuli.net. You can download all the films for $4.99, except for the ones where there's two. OK, like like nine and ten. It's now nine ninety nine or whatever it is. But I think you get my point. Um, there are 13 books. I, I was on the, the phone this morning discussing a very interesting deal for number 14. We might be going with a very large publisher. More about that in the coming weeks. I will be speaking twice at the Prophecy Watchers Conference. You're going to want to check that out through live streaming or get your ticket. And I hope to see you there. Thanks so much for watching, folks. Really appreciate it. Go to the website, lamarzuli.com, lamarzuli.com. Um, and I just appreciate your patronage. God bless you. Endeavoring to obtain all flying stuff. Marcel's own words, it was something that he'd never seen before. Something from another world. In our opinion, Marcel was a patsy. Just verbal directions, as we know what's about it. Well, again, his father was telling the truth. He dug in the eye and he said, it really happened, and he held his hand up just like this. If they had six fingers, not five. He said they looked quite a bit like us. Do you think your grandfather was a patsy? A hundred percent. Of the cover-up by the U.S. military. Do you believe our government has made contact with intelligent extraterrestrials? I can't discuss in public setting. Do we have the bodies of the pilots? A biologics came with some of these recoveries. He deliberately obfuscated and they lied to the American people. When the Pentagon decided to lie about what happened at Roswell. It's going to be six feet away. This little being about three and a half or tall. She said the nurses who, you, who were there during the crash, they're now at a convent. The first book that Randall wrote. And he said to Jess, he said, that's not fiction. But for everybody, yeah, I mean, this is a human thing. It's a, a worldwide changing, be life-changing for everybody. It was certainly not a weather balloon and not something from this earth.